I want to thank Peter for moderating. He's really been an inspiration because he's one of the, you know, an established academic ophthalmologist, <clears throat> very careful about anything he endorses, uh, and very, very serious. And he got on board with Express at a time when it really wasn't all that popular. And he's also done a, probably the greatest amount of work for uh, publishing his data and sharing it with a lot of people. So I just wanted to say we're all very indebted to Peter. Uh, but in 2002, at this time in, in Orlando, uh, I stated that the Express was the first and only limbal seton in history that worked. And a very famous glaucoma specialist commented that no limbal-based seton has ever worked. It will never work. And so sometimes it takes a little bit of courage to go out and get five and six years out on the bleeding edge in front of everybody else. And now the question this year is, are tube shunts the only way to do glaucoma surgery? And where does filtering surgery fit in the glaucoma surgeon's toolbox vis-a-vis -vis non penetrating procedures, tubes obviously, big tubes, little tubes, maybe someday there'll be intermediate tubes, and cyclodestructive procedures. And now there are new pot shots from the peanut gallery. This device will cause endothelial cell loss, meaning the express, from contact with eye rubbing. And we all know that all arch tubes, no matter how perfectly we place them, whether they're sitting on the iris perfectly with no contact or up relatively close to the cornea, at least intermittently touch the corneal endothelium uh, with well-documented endothelial cell loss, and this has not caused a storm of, storm of controversy, mainly because people felt that these people were in such dire straits um, that that was a, a, a sacrifice or a, a, an issue we were going to negotiate away by, by trying to help save these people's uh, eyes from going blind from glaucoma. And so when you're back in your office and you look at your population of Ahmeds and Barvelts and things that come along, push on the eye right where the tube goes in and you'll watch that almost every single one, no matter how perfectly you think it's placed, if you push right at the limbus, that tube is going to flex up and hit the endothelium which means that the patients, every time they rub their eye, are causing endothelial contact. So this is an implant that was done, a gonioscopic photograph of an implant that was done. It's an R50 in 2005. You can see it's perfectly placed. It's actually just right coming right through Schwalbe's line there. It's not in contact with the cornea, and it's certainly not in contact with the iris. This is a person, I did his third ophthalmic uh, operation. He had two refractive lens procedures done. He had a first, he had a crystal lens, and then he had a resume. I took out the resume. By the way, he finally got a, a secondary a pseudophagic glaucoma with a pressure of 45 that the refractive surgeon didn't notice, um, but wondered why his vision was fluctuating all the time. And you can see a perfectly placed R50. So our typical express with a patient, this is a first day post-op. You can see the sutures. I do a much more uh, diligent closure now. I, I think probably the biggest issue of complication in any filtering operation is any leakage in the early post-operative period. But you can see that there's already a navascular bleb forming. And this is one week out. And you can see it's an avascular bleb. Those sutures are all still intact. And the uh, ring of fire is slowly moving backward as the mitomycin takes hold. And questions about erosion. Here's a picture of a, a patient, a gonia photograph of a patient that was about four years out, very nice, very clean, sitting there, basically doing nothing, which is what we want to see. Corneal touch, we asked the question, is that possible? And we draw a little diagram. It's really going to have to move a lot. It's highly doubtful. Then I decided to get more aggressive. And, and because Andrew's here joining us today, we have the ophthalmic earthquake test. I, first, I felt my first earthquake in San Francisco. Uh, it was interesting. So here is an R50 sitting there, and I'm mashing, shaking, going to photograph. It doesn't move at all. Here's another one. Ooh, it's a 6.9 on the Richter scale. <laughs> the freeways are coming down, but the express shunt is not moving. This is my Q-tip earthquake. I stick a Q-tip up on the patient's lid, and I smash down almost as hard as I can. And they basically just don't move. 
And once again, go back to your practice and check this out. But I just really kind of wanted to address that issue. These things are extremely stable. And once they're placed, they don't, they don't move. And we start to wonder about the issue of whether or not the device, the hook device, is really all that necessary because I think once they're in, they're like any other glaucoma filtering procedure. So this is another gonio photograph. This is where I'm now actually getting better at doing these in focus. So when the express shunt is properly placed and stable, it appears not to contact the endothelium even under strenuous torquing and pressure. So with the external compression, we will not move. And in the last year, I've examined about 500 eyes with an express and have compressed, massaged, poked the eyes of my patients to assess the stability of the express to determine if the device could contact the endothelium, and my conclusion is it cannot even with extreme manipulation. The take home message, especially for the new surgeons, so we've got to direct this back to the folks who are, who are joining us now, is correctly place the device under the flap. If you get that, you really don't have to worry about the device that much. Manage the wound with a watertight seal. Manage wound healing with careful follow-up, suture lysis and antimetabolites as needed. Make sure you use enough steroids for 68 weeks or more and do the best you can to eliminate bleb vascularity. And we're not talking about that nice little normal capillary and, and um, small vessel, uh, but you don't want that, that inflamed vessel uh, configuration. And, that, and use that for the most part for your endpoint. And I want to thank you all and good luck. I hope you enjoy the Express as much as I have.